for Canada's top court rules in favor of Uber driver in gig economy case. Um, unfortunately, this is not a blanket ruling where all drivers benefit in Canada. This was one individual that went through arbitration, I believe. This was in Ottawa. Canada's Supreme Court on Friday ruled in favor of a driver in a gig economy case that paves the way for a class action suit calling for Uber Technologies Incorporated to recognize drivers in Canada as company employees. Um, again, um, I would think if this thing does go to a class action and they represent thousands and thousands of Canadian drivers, that there would be some sort of um, deal made, you know, that they still have the flexibility in Canada to choose and to drive whenever they wish, and that they, you know, like here in California, might be hybrid uh, gig worker laws that then kick into place. Uber Eats driver David Heller had filed a class action suit challenged by Uber aiming to secure a minimum wage vacation pay and other benefits like overtime pay. Drivers are now classified as independent contractors and do not have such benefits. Heller's attorney said the decision allowing him to sue was important, but only a small first step in a case that will probably take years to litigate. Um, they're very good at that, drawing cases out. Um, we know that with AB5. Um, the ride-hailing company's contract allows arbitration, but not class action lawsuits. After the ruling, an Uber spokeswoman said the company would amend its contracts to align with the court's principles. It doesn't mean that they're going to con completely conform, right? Going forward, dispute resolution will be more accessible to drivers, the spokeswoman said in a statement. Two days ago, um, California said it plans to ask a state court judge to force Uber and Lyft to classify their ride hail drivers as employees rather than contractors. And Canada's 8 to 1 Supreme Court ruling dismisses an Uber appeal to an Ontario High Court ruling that said the Uber's arbitration clause violates provincial labor rules and is invalid and unenforceable. Interesting. The arbitration process, which must be conducted in the Netherlands, where Uber has its international headquarters, costs about 19 thousand Canadian dollars, 14,500 US dollars. Hella earned between 21,000 and 31,000 Canadian dollars per year. Uh, this was an access to justice case, said Michael Wright, one of Hella's lawyers. The court essentially ruled that a stronger party was taking advantage of a weaker party in an unfair manner. Good for them. Now Hella um, now Heller can restart his action suit, Wright said, but the matter will not be settled soon. This is the, this is the first round in a series of rounds, said Wright, a labor and employment lawyer with Wright, Henry LLP in Toronto, adding that it could take a few more years. Uber shares were down 2.7% around noon Eastern time. I saw they dropped below $30. Interesting. So um, good for those Canadians, and hopefully we get some res resolution here in the United States. Please feel free to comment.